Hello, everybody. This is the Cincinnati Herald podcast. I am your co-host, John Alexander Reese, digital editor of the Cincinnati Herald. If you don't know about us, the Cincinnati Herald has been around since 1955 and is the largest African-American newspaper in the greater Cincinnati area. And now let me introduce my co-host, Andrea Carter. How are you doing today, Andrea? Fine. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. And let me introduce my guest. We have with us Circulation Director, Wade Lacey Sr. How are you doing today, Wade? How are you doing, John? It's good to be here. Good to hear. I also want to introduce writer Tyra Gordon. How are you doing today, Tyra? I'm doing well, John. How about you? I am doing good. And i also like to introduce intern Zoe Becker. How are you doing, Zoe? Hi, I'm great. Glad to be here. Awesome. And I'd like to introduce our newest intern to the Cincinnati Herald, Suhana Sinha. How are you doing today, Suhana? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you all are doing well, too. Great, that's great to hear. So with that out of the way, let's talk about our main stories for the week. Our first story deals with the second impeachment of Trump. Arguments in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump have gotten out of the way. And on Tuesday, senators upheld the constitutionality of the trial itself in a 56 to 44 vote. Several media outlets report that Trump is furious with the performance of his legal team. Trump's two lawyers, Bruce Castor and David Skeon, have been on the case for just over a week. Several members of Trump's legal team quit earlier this month after Trump pressured them to use a defense strategy that relied on the false premise that he was the true winner of the 2020 election. Andrea, I know you've been following this um, trial for a while. What are your thoughts on Trump's second impeachment and everything? Um, I I think... The, um, the case managers have a stronger case this time than they did last time. Um, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of fact, a lot of law. Um, and they have not only shown a chronological timeline, but they showed how Trump has been an integral part of all what happened along the way, what happened on the day of the January 6th event, even the December 12th event with the Proud Boys in DC. Um, But also they showed his lack of action during the riot, during the event of the cap, the attack on the Capitol and how he, everyone was calling and urging him to act and he didn't act. And the only phone call that he made was to a senator to ask if he could delay the count of the um, electoral vote. And that was it. And then later on, he tweeted something to say, please stop and be, a, you know, be a peace. But it has, I mean, they're laying out a huge case, which a lot of senators walked away very emotional. They showed footage from police officers, body cams, where we see exactly what they went through to hold the line at the Capitol and people are breaking down and very emotional, reliving the day. And they're hoping that some of the Republicans are swayed enough to rethink what they're doing. Because I mean, it is a tough case to, it's gonna be interesting to see how they defend Trump against this. Um, Because right now I don't see how they can. Right. Tyra, uh, what are your thoughts on this um second impeachment of Trump. Well, John, just to kind of piggyback off of some of the things that have that Andrea has, has said, um, just reading up on the trial, I'm glad to see justice um, being played out in the situation. And as Andrea said, I hope that the emotions, um, replaying the videos from the, the riot on um, Capitol Hill, will urge a lot of senators um, to convict him um, because I feel it's necessary. Um, So I just really hope that justice is played out in this way. Definitely. Wade, uh, what are your thoughts on this issue? Uh, uh, I just hope, uh, that's a big hope that uh, Republicans can find their moral conscience and uh, make the uh, right decisions and do the right thing. Uh, 
I stopped calling myself a Republican uh, leading up to the 2016 election because all of the nonsense and the things that were said and the way they performed and acted, um, it just made me um, ashamed to even call myself a Republican. Mm. But I no longer call myself a Republican. I say that I am an individual with a conservative attitude. Uh, but hopefully, again, the uh, enough of the Republicans, senators will um, find that moral conscience to do the right thing. Of course. Zoe, what are your thoughts on the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump? What's coming out during this trial right now is definitely deeply unsettling. Those videos that Andrea mentioned earlier but just such powerful truths and really just absolutely necessary public information. It's really crazy and it's honestly really scary, but we're seeing a lot of heroes from the events of January 6th from some previously unseen footage, you know, the Capitol staff and some guards um, and all major news outlets are covering it right now, obviously. But I do think it's very interesting that Fox News hasn't been airing the impeachment trial today. And I think that's really telling because I think it's something that everyone in the public should be paying attention to right now. Of course. Suhana, what are your thoughts on this whole second impeachment trial of Donald Trump? The second impeachment of Donald Trump can be related to the Capitol riots that opened the case for his impeachment again. I have my understanding of this is that the moment was during the Capitol riots was extremely shocking for the nation and people who take some form of comfort in knowing that the constitution is watching over them. But it was that day was truly a nightmare that many, many people in hundreds walked over to the Capitol, not only walked over but entered there. And cause such a chaos that it costed people's lives and in my opinion that is very shallow from a you know, for a country's leader to uh, encourage such an act and be not happy about losing the election but on the when i feel that this is unconstitutional and terrible and justice should be given to people at the same time, it makes me wonder, the people who support Trump, people who are also part of America, after this impeachment, might react more disappointed than um, before. And I don't know what challenges will it bring for America further, but I believe impeachment is a step towards justice but I don't know what are the consequences it will bring for us in future. Well yeah. said, well said. Now our second news item talks about Mary Wilson. And if you don't know who Mary Wilson is, she is one of the founding members of the musical group, The Supremes. Unfortunately, she died suddenly late Monday, February 8th at her home just outside of Las Vegas. Motown founder Barry Gordon wrote in a statement, the Supremes were always known as the sweethearts of Motown. Mary, along with Diana Ross and Florence Ballard, came to Motown in the early 1960s after an unprecedented string of number one hits, television, and nightclub bookings. They opened doors for themselves, the other Motown acts, and many, many others. Wade, what are your, th what are your thoughts on the passing of Mary Wilson? Oh, it's so sad to see her go. Um, I, I'm, I'm a product of the 60s and the 70s, uh, the music scene, and uh, the Supremes uh, and the Temptations were, were it. And when we talk about uh, the Supremes, uh, they were originally called the Primates, and they later became the Supremes. And uh, they were, early on in their career, they were like the laughing stock of Motown. Mm -hmm. uh, the other women uh, groups and all in Motown was, were already hit, hit wonders. They were, they were doing great, and uh, the Supremes didn't have any hits. And all of a sudden, they, they hit that first hit, and then it's just like they, they just uh, set fire on everything, and they uh, couldn't stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a, a story of, of perseverance, because it was uh, 
early on, it was it would have been easy for them to, to just quit. Uh, she was one of, like I said, one of the founding members of the group. Uh, everybody held her in a, a high esteem. Um, she's been around for a long time. I know just two years ago, I believe she was part of the Dancing with the Stars, everything. So she was very, still very active in everything. So I'm just so sorry to see her go. Yes, indeed. Andrea, what are your thoughts on the passing of Mary Wilson? Well, it's like, like Wade said, it's, it's a little bit of your childhood going away. Because, you know, I grew up on the Supremes. I, I watched Diana Ross come into her own. I mean, um, and see, you know, how the Supremes sort of got pushed aside as Diana got bigger. But Mary Wilson was an icon in her own way because even though the behind the scenes were ugly, um, I think overall she made a name for herself for being an author, being an activist, being um, a cultural ambassador. And I think she showed women how that, you know, once you had a, a great singing career, you can take that and do more. And um, she rose above everything. And she was a star in her own right. And I think that's what she should be remembered for, not just the Supremes. Of course. Tyra, what are your thoughts on the passing of Mary Wilson? It was sad to hear and sad to read. I was a fan of the Supremes through through my parents. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up listening to their music, but just, you know, that was my, my parents' generation. Um, so she definitely was a music pioneer that will be missed. But as Andrea touched on, um, in hearing about her death, I learned that she was a humanitarian and a philanthropist. So it was interesting to read um, that she, you know, she fought for social justice and for other causes um, outside of music. But again, she will be missed. Yes, definitely. Now, Zoe, I know uh, you're part of the Generation Z and probably didn't, and I know you didn't grow up with the Supremes, but um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the passing of Mary Wilson? And did you ever, li ever listen to the Supremes? I did a little bit, um, definitely like more in my teenage years, not when I was growing up. So I missed about a little bit on that, but I definitely got into it a little bit in my early college years and she was definitely an absolute icon. And so it's definitely really sad news. Um, but I do think the spirit of her incredible talent and her profound impact on the music industry is gonna last a long, long time after she's passed. Definitely. Now, Suhana, I know you're also part of the Generation Z group. Did you um, ever listen to the Supremes? And what are your thoughts on the passing of Mary Wilson? Um, I would say, agreeing with Zoe, um, my opinion on um, my opinion on her is I'm receiving a secondhand nostalgia where I did never grew up listening to her songs, but after she passed away, I went through her albums and I listened to her music and I must say they are timeless. Mm. And it makes me sad that somebody oh, of that nature, somebody, a strong woman, passed away and she championed so many causes. But beyond anything, she had a wonderful voice and that will be missed. And I agree, maybe I didn't listen to her songs growing up, but I, I believe her songs will be my jam in for the next couple of days. Of course, of course. Now, moving on to our third story of the day, and it is about Charlie Winburn. The Hamilton County Republican Party made history on Saturday, February the 6th, during Black History Month, by unanimously voting to appoint Charles E. Winburn as the first African-American county treasurer in Hamilton County's 230 years. Winburn is also the first African-American man to serve in the Hamilton County executive branch from either political party. Andrea, what are your thoughts on this very historical moment? Charlie knows how to, you know, just when you think he's down, he comes back up again. Um, he is such a chameleon. I, I think it's a wonderful honor for him um, to serve as the first Hamilton County Treasurer, even if it is just going to be for about six months um, since he lost the election. But 
um, Charlie, through serving as city council and a champion of different causes, um, I'm not surprised. I, I think in the the light of um, what's going on democratically in Hamilton County, he has a shot at um, making a name for himself and um, then picking and choosing what he's going to do next. Um, I think this is a good step up for him. He's had difficulty winning county races, even winning state races, um, because once people learned that he was Republican, a lot of Democrats don't like him as a Republican. They liked him when they didn't know he was a Republican and voted for him. So he has a lot to overcome. Um, but I think this is a step in the right direction and hopefully he will succeed. But I'm just glad, happy for him that he has, you know, he's, his hand is back in public service. Of course. Wade, what are your thoughts on Charlie Winburn and this historic event? Well, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to him. Uh, that's a uh, good, good good position for him to be in. Uh, Charlie has been a loyal Republican for years. He's been very active in the Republican Party. He won uh, various races uh, as a Republican. Uh, I think this appointment puts him in a position when that next election come up that he will be in a very, very good place to, to uh, fill that position. Uh, so I'm very happy for him. I'm happy that the uh, party decided to uh, recognize his his, his uh, efforts in the past and what he does for the for the party, and uh, hopefully he'll be uh, successful in the next election. Yes, definitely. Tyra, what are your thoughts on this uh, subject? Well, I grew up hearing Charlie Winburn's name a lot. He has a longstanding career, um, political career in this area, so it's good to see uh, that. You know, he's, he's making history as the first um, African-American to serve in this role, in this capacity. So I think it was a very positive story, very hopeful. Hope he does great things in this position. Definitely. Zoe, what are your thoughts on Charlie Winburn and this historic moment? So I didn't know much about him at first, but in researching, I saw a lot of online discourse about the story. Um, I think his appointment was definitely groundbreaking. A little surprising that it's taken 230 years, which just seems like a long time, um, for this position to be filled by a black man. However, I'm not surprised that he was favored for this short-term position over Democratic candidate uh, Jill Schiller. I hope I'm saying that correctly. But I am glad that progress is being made toward racial equality in Hamilton County's government. Yes, yes. Suhana, what are your thoughts on Charlie Winburn um, making history the other day? Mr. Winburn received a well-deserved respect, and it makes me elated that a good, hardworking man of color is going to lead and care for us. It makes me hopeful for Hamilton, and at the same time, it makes me hopeful for the future of America. Definitely. And let me just also add that Charlie Winburn does creative coaching classes and he has a free 30 minute coaching class just make sure you check out our ads on the cincinnati herald's facebook and twitter page and you can also see the ad on our website now moving on to our final story both stacy abrams and the black lives matter movement have been nominated to win the nobel peace prize and let me just add that the nominations represent an opportunity for either Abrams or the Black Lives Matter to win even more support around the globe should they win. Andrea, what are your thoughts on Abrams and the Black Lives Matter group um, being nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize? I think it's fantastic. Um, it is, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement has gone around the world in such a way that I don't think everyone realized it would happen that way. Um, and I think it's put a lot of countries on notice of where um, they claim they don't have racism, but they do have discrimination, discriminatory practices against people of color. And I, I think along with um, what has happened with Meghan Markle is very slowly people are starting to realize that they need to change what they do. This is going to take a while for it to happen, especially over in European countries. 
um, the fact that Stacy got a, got nominated, um, she has done a lot to promote voting, to promote that you have a voice, to promote um, the fight against people stealing, I shouldn't say stealing election, but doing um, illicit or not even, you know what, I'm trying to think what is the best word to say about what happened in Georgia. Um, um, I think you could say historic. Historic, it, it was a historic means because she um, didn't just walk away. What she did is she worked with a group of people to turn, um, get people not only registered to vote, but to turn um, a, a, a state blue or at least purple where they didn't expect it to happen. And they, they caught people by surprise because they were so busy happy with what they accomplished they didn't recognize what was happening underneath their nose and now they're on notice that there's power in votes and now they're trying to change the laws and do some things differently but that won't stop people from getting out the vote again yes yes wade what are your thoughts on Stacey abrams and the black lives matter movement being nominated for a nobel peace prize uh, it's uh, someone that we know recently would say, I think it's huge, <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, how quickly, as Andrea said, it turned around uh, in terms of the, the way people think about it now. You think about last year uh, with all the marching and the, the uh, protesting, and it was so inclusive. Uh, and just a few years ago, if you said Black Lives Matter, a lot of people wanted to run and hide, and they didn't want anything to do with it. But as we saw in 2020, that changed completely. It turned like 360 degrees. And uh, so I think that was just huge for the Black Lives Movement to uh, to uh, make that, that uh, change of direction in terms of the way the public sees them now. As for Stacey Abram, um, Again, it's a it's a it's a good war, uh, worldwide and all that. But I still am more concerned with how she is going to be treated here nationally. How the Democratic Party is going to uh, are they really going to embrace what she's done and try to uh, 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 partner with her going forward? Uh, the war is good and everything, but her role I think is a little different. Um, and I'm just hoping that the Democratic Party uh, see her for what she is and do not miss this opportunity that she's given. Yes, yes. Tyra, what are your thoughts on this story? I think the nomination for Stacey Abrams and the Black Lives Movement, Black, excuse me, Black Lives Matter Movement um, speaks volumes in reading up on the story, of course, they think of Stacey Abrams has um, a much better chance of, of winning than the Black Lives Matter movement. But in terms of Stacey Abrams, I feel like she can be viewed as a, a revolutionary in her own right. One of the articles I read compared her to Martin Luther King and in terms of her strides um, and her accomplishments towards uh, voter rights. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's very good and um, We'll see how far she makes it in the process. Yes, indeed. Zoe, uh, your thoughts? I love Stacey Abrams. I'm a huge fan of her. Um, I'm so glad that she got nominated. And I definitely see where you're coming from, Wade, about how the Democratic Party might perceive her. But I definitely think her huge public support and this nomination could help her be more accepted. I think her work with Fair Fight Action and what she's done to battle voter suppression has been really amazing. And her work in Georgia was instrumental in getting the Senate to Dem Democratic majority. I'm just ecstatic that her work is being recognized and I cannot wait to see how the future of her political career plays out. Yes, definitely. Suhana, what are your thoughts on this story? Uh, first of all, it's a shame that the black community is still fighting for equal respect. And whether Stacey wins or the movement Black Lives Matter win, it's a victory for a already long running history. And 
I am, and I believe that there should be more powerful colored women on this list of Nobel Peace Prize. And unfortunately, there aren't many, but I have faith that in this 21st century, we will definitely make mark in a way that the war will finally stop and the due respect will finally be received. I have faith. That's, that's what I have to say. Yes, let's hope. Well, that was a fascinating discussion, but I think we're good for today. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of my guests for coming on the show today. Thank you all so much. Thank you. It's nice being here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you, John. No problem. No problem at all. And I also want to say, make sure to check out all the stories we talked about today on our website at www.thecincinnatiherald.com. You can also check out our print edition, which is sold at your local Kroger, UDF, Walgreens, Joseph Beth Booksellers, and at select service stations. Also, make sure to check us out on Facebook. Just search for us at the Cincinnati Herald. You can follow us at Cincy Herald on Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow us on YouTube. Just search for the Herald TV. And we also have a TikTok channel. Just find us at the Cincinnati Herald. And folks, there's still a pandemic going on. So if you go outside, make sure you wear a mask, make sure you wash your hands, and practice social distancing. This is your co-host, John Alexander Reese, digital editor at Cincinnati Herald, and everybody have a good night. Mm -hmm.